and responds for it. What is the email going to? Different people. Afternoon. This is Sarita Gibbons and Haley and Tiffany. Hi, how are you doing? And Jane? Oh, James. Okay. This is the facility needs manager. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Um, I don't think I have his uh, email address though. Can you email it to me and then I'll make sure that he's on all of our emails? Okay, awesome. So um, I have two housekeeping questions and then I'm going to get started. So my First housekeeping question is, do, do, do you have a copy of the application checklist that Tiffany emailed? Yes, yes. It's, um, I think it's like four sheets. It's an Excel spreadsheet. And it's in that uh, email that Tiffany sent today as well. I have you checked my email today. I have it. <laughs> I, I know. Yes. Okay, awesome. You want to take some time to print it off for you two? Okay, I'll just put myself on mute and let me know when you're ready again. They're super big, busy. Interesting. So Richmond didn't send us their community department list. Only Selma did. This is what it is. Oh. Richmond sent us the um, what you have. Okay. Because I responded just as a thank you to Maurice about contacting so all right hold on so we uh, haven't received it. so someone's a little different so we have we do not have richmond's no list. so we need to send them an email to say can i get you right. as soon as possible okay, okay. Yeah. all right awesome okay so before we get started do you have any You have 46 questions? Oh, the checklist is, yes. Yeah, it has 46 rows. Do you have any questions for us before we get started? Okay, so um, to let you know, you have we have tripled up on you. You have Tiffany, you have Haley, and you have myself. We three will be completing your section 202 grant application. Um, it is a large grant, so it needs a strong force behind it. And um, one of the first questions I will ask you, which you probably answered already, which is the primary point of contact will be you. Is that correct? Right. Okay. And the secondary will be James. Okay. Awesome. 
today, the, uh, the grant due date is August the 28th, 2019. And that, that gives us a bit of time and it is a very large grant. So what I wanna do is not to overwhelm ourselves, especially initially. So this meeting, I just want us to talk about the program, what our plans are, talk about some features of the grant um, <coughs> announcement, and just lay some basic foundation and then we'll schedule a next meeting, and then that's the meeting we will go into the requirements of the grant, like the actual grant documents. But for this call, I just want like an all hands on debt <coughs> meeting and just to iron out some basic information about the grant, okay? Okay. All righty. So um, the purpose of this kickoff call is to uh, have an overview for the Section 202 Housing for Elderly Program grant. The grant due date is August the 28, 2019. The purpose of the grant is to give you up to $5 million for you to build, uh, purchase outright, uh, buy and renovate. You can renovate, rehabilitate, or reconstruct a uh, multi-family development that you will designate for the elderly. The elderly is defined as persons who are 62 years old and older and um, to operate that program under a PRAC agreement. The funding agency will also give you 75% um, of the yearly operating costs under that PRAC agreement towards the operation of the Section 202 development. And what they're saying is they're, they're um, estimating or assuming that the residents' contributions to rent will supplement the remaining 25% of the operation of the development. So eligible applicants are nonprofits with their 501c3 certificate from the IRS. They can also have a 501c4 certificate from the IRS, but you must be a nonprofit organization. And the period of performance will, well, let me backtrack and ask you, what is the name of your nonprofit? Have you ever used this uh, nonprofit to develop property before? No, it's brand new. How old is it? Uh, it was just uh, it was just incorporated um, what six months ago. Do you have your five hundred one c three certificate? From yeah. Oh, the yes, that's what I mean, the letter. Yeah, we have the letter. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, do you have development experience? No, we don't. Okay. The period of performance, um, HUD says that as soon as they give you a letter of award, they expect that you will break ground no later than 18 months after your letter of award. And they provide a warning and they say that if you won't or if you don't break ground um, no later than 18 months after the award that they, you're liable to have your funds um, be withdrawn and given to another applicant. So what, what was your plan? Did you plan to buy a property outright? Do you want to buy land and build? What was your plan? We have land. We're going to build on our land. Okay. How many units were you thinking to build?
Okay, okay, single story. Give me the range again of the number that you have been told you can build. 40, and she was 48, and she is 89. Oh, okay, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so um, HUD gave us a total development cost, which is the amount that you can uh, build for one unit in your area. So if whatever the range is, we'll just say you're going to build 89. So it would be 89 units times that amount. And as long as that amount for your area that they say in order for you to build one unit of single family housing, um, in order for you to build one unit, this is the cost. So it would be 89 units times that cost. And as long as it's under the five million, then that is what we would request for your capital advance fund portion. Okay. What is the what is the per unit cost? Um, Tiffany is going to email that to you after. What is it? Tiffany. Yes. No, that's operating cost. That's not uh that's operating cost. That's not the development cost. So uh hold on, let me grab the development uh cost for you. Hold on a second, let me grab, I'm pulling it up right now for you. Yes, total development cost for 2018. That's per unit? Uh, that's per unit. Let's see if, it, uh, let's see if your area is there. Yeah, you are. Um, are you thinking of building a? Are you thinking of building studios or one bedrooms? One bedroom. Okay. So since you're doing uh, detach, it has, it has to be going one bedroom, correct? Exactly. And if it's a two bedroom, it has to be the same square footage as a one bedroom. And if it is more square footage, the additional square footage you have to pay for that with non with non uh 202 funds you can't use this grant to pay for the additional square footage which one bedroom i have no idea <laughs> It's like somebody asked me the other day, what's the difference between match and leverage? Like there is, I have no clue. What's the difference? <laughs> There's none. <laughs> okay. Are you going at the 193, 312? Uh, probably the 173, 461. Okay. Probably a question about the number. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know what detached, semi-detached is. Single family? Because the single family won't be uh, attached to anything. So they mean like homes? Yes, like those, like single units. Yeah, look. Like No, I've um, so if you do the 173, the most you can get is 28 units. 28 units. Yeah, because what I did was divided the 173 into the maximum 5 million, and you only have 28 units. For the row house. For the row house, because I, I used the 173. 
these are these are their numbers so if you have a right. developer that can you know be affordable you could you could probably get your 89 So the, this is uh, the um, amount, the total development cost that we're looking at for the type of housing you want to build, which will be one bedrooms. So this is what we're working with. How close are you to um, selecting that developer? So I'm moving to line item six, which is the award information. So as I stated, we can request up to five million. Um, <laughs> so in this grant announcement, HUD has allocated fifty million dollars. In the grant announcement, they actually say that they have one hundred and ten million dollars, of which. 50 million will be for this grant announcement and then next year they'll come out with another NOFA for the remaining 60 million. However, <coughs> in their webcast, they stated that not only um, it's, it has been increased from, from the 110 million, they now have 160 million. So it's a lot of funding out there that they're trying to use to address this housing shortage and especially provide housing for the elderly. So um, I don't know how they're going to distribute the remaining um, amount, which, which would be 110. They haven't told us, but for this grant announcement, it's 50 million, but we have the opportunity to go after more. So just FYI for you. So now I'm going to start talking about the cost share matching contribution. So there is three types of cost share for the section 202. So there is the owner deposit, which you have to do either a um, one half percent or not to exceed $10,000 of your owner contribution. Um, basically like a down deposit uh, towards the, the development. So it's an owner deposit, the minimum capital investment they will expect from you. Then they have leverage, but leverage I will talk to you about a little later. I'll move down to three. They have the owner deposit for operating deficit. And they say that they want you to have and put in an escrow account $25,000, not to exceed $25,000 to cover um, operating deficits during the first three years of the program, the project. So any operating uh, shortfalls that you experience, you can tap into that $25,000. If you have any uh, money left over from the $25,000 after the three years, you get to claim it and just put it <coughs> in your, you know, your account. So they don't keep it or anything. You can just pull it out um, after that three-year period. Okay. So now the leverage. Um, so we will get up to 15 points for leverage. Now it's just <coughs> points. So this is a, I am assuming this is going to be a very competitive grant because there are a lot of people who want to build affordable units in their area. So I will think that a lot of people will be able to get the 15 points, but it's a range. It won't disqualify you, but we're trying to get as many points as possible. So what they say is in order for you to get the maximum 15 points, 
if you request one dollar, you have to leverage ten dollars. So they want you to do a ten to one. Okay. Uh, do you have a copy of the grant announcement with you? Okay. take you to page 43 to 44 where they talk about that 15 points and how we can get those 15 points. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm back. All right, so I'm taking you now to page 43 at the bottom there where it says project leverage. Applicants will be rated on the amount of financing brought to the project by the applicant in relation to the amount of capital advance funding requested in the application. A leverage score will be assigned to your application based on the scale provided. So um, they say uh, you should answer these questions. How much have you requested in capital advance funding? So they, they want you to provide project leverage. So they say in item number two, leveraging capital could include, but is not limited to any of the following. Tax credit equity from 9% low income housing tax credit, 4% low income housing tax credit. You can do historic rehabilitation tax credit. You can do opportunity fund investment or a similar federal or state tax credit. You can do a first mortgage financing supported by non-PRAC funds, such as a market rate unit or units under a Section 8 contract. You can do subordinate loan funds. You can do other grant awards. You can do a sponsor capital. You can include deferred developer fee and or appraise the value of donated or seller financed land. You can do land donations or seller financing must include an appraisal or tax assessment to document value. It will be donated land. It will be donated land? Do you, um, yes, we own it. There's no debt on it. That's awesome. Do you know what the value of the land is?
if we, um, so remember, if we request $1, we have to leverage $10 to get the full 15. Okay, so land value is 232,400. $232,400. That's really good. Do you think the developer will defer his uh, developer fee? Okay, so um, how much leverage do you think that we can get towards what we're requesting? Um, it's all money on paper. So if the city, you know, the city um, is probably very supportive of you doing this. So if the city wants to waive the taxes for the property for the next 40 years, we can do that. If the developer defers his fee, we can do that. Um, if uh, your current landscaper wants to provide free landscaping, to, you know, after you build and then you have to put in landscaping, if the landscaper wants to do that for free, that's a value. So any, any entity that contributes to the development of this property for free, that is a contribution. So it does not necessarily have to be ready cash. No, uh, the developer would probably need to tell us. Because in the RFP, we're asking the developer to um, tell us what percentage of the developer fee and admin housing we get, then admin housing would defer their portion of the development fee. Uh -huh. We had to put in for the cash and debt status because it was uh, property for units for low income housing and would remain that way forever. And so they said, we don't have to pay taxes on the county tax. Okay. So we don't have to come up with the leverage today. <laughs> That's why this meeting is so important. But what if we do like a 4% tax credit on it? Does that count? Yes, so that is an option. So they'll accept either the 9% or the 4%. Yes, they will accept that because they gave us a few examples of what they'll accept, even though that they're, we're not limited to these things. We can do other things as long as it contributes to the development of the property. So we can do any of these things plus anything else that contributes to the development. Um, is the property in a historic district? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Is it in an area that's slated for uh, revitalization? I don't believe so, no. Okay. You know the big buzz uh, term now is opportunity zone. Do you know if 
I already have the list of opportunities on, I'm going to research it, um, but I just wanted to ask you anyways, do you know if the property is in an opportunity zone? Other than um, the property we're building now, do you know of any other elderly developments that are close by? Do you have a lot of elderly people living in the area? Did you guys check the minority um, concentration tool to see if it's up? Kim, um, I saw that they did put out some updated questions, but it was none of the questions we asked. Yeah. You saw? So, what's my plan? My plan is um, ask them when they're going to put up that minority concentration tool because I just had that. No. You did already? Yeah. How, how can you know if you should proceed with your development or not if that's not up? Did you guys, um, well, Mike was out today, so can you get with Mike to answer that question about, oh, oh really? Can, can you understand it? Okay. Mike and I are on the same page as far as what we understand. That's, that's what we'll go with. All right. So, so, so let's talk about it. Figure out something else. But okay. I do. That's what it says. Yeah, I don't know if I bought the printout because I can kind of, if not, it's put on right here. Okay. Of how I can understand it and how he understands it to me. So. What did he say? Uh huh. Did he have good news for us? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So. But there are no specific redevelopment plans for that area. Okay. 
Well, uh, if we can get the taxes waived, we could even get the utilities waived. Um, so we can get the taxes waived, we can get the utilities waived, um, you're donating the land, um, we'll get, hopefully get the 4% um, low income housing tax credit, and then we'll see what our total is. So we just have to keep in mind that in order for us to get the 15 points, and this is very competitive, we have to do a 10 to 1. I know. It's kind of like if I had $10, I probably wouldn't need your dollar. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it myself, but I think what they want is they, they're forcing, forcing you to make sure that you, you have partnerships. You must get help to go after one of these. They're forcing your hand. Okay. Yes. All right. But we can't do it without one. No, we can't. Um, they're <coughs> asking us for additional technical information that only a developer would be able to create right. uh, schematics and all the drawings and these things. So. Um, all right. So. This was my goal for this kickoff meeting, was to just ask these basic questions, get an understanding, lay a good foundation, and then I wanna schedule with you for a next meeting. We can do it after the developer is confirmed, and so he or she can be in on that meeting when we start talking about these documents that we must start creating together. All right. <laughs> it's coming together. <laughs> it's going to be a huge accomplishment. Like when you're done, you're going to be like, wow. It's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, your staff makes off great. So I just like to have fun. No, they love it. We we don't we like the clients who are fun because grant writing is they've been boring enough as it is, so we have a little fun with it. Okay. All right, All right so well, hopefully Charlie or Richard or somebody will respond tomorrow if you can. <laughs> For sure. So do you think that we should just go ahead and schedule a meeting or do you want to wait until they're on board to schedule? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I agree. We just let's just put ourselves on the calendar. Yeah. So, so that's May the thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Next Thursday. And what time would be good for you? Yes, that's perfect for me. Which one of you girls are gonna sell all the money? Major. Okay, it will be coming from Haley, the meeting invite. Okay, and I'll send you guys, I'll send you um, the email. Okay. <coughs> okay. Look at me like, you gave me something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> James, it's going to be worth it. Can you imagine? We're going to build an a 89 unit development. Now that's gonna give me a reason to come to your town. So I have to be there for the grand opening. Well, thank you. <laughs>
Okay, so Haley will send that meeting invite, and then um, we're now we're now confirmed for May the thirtieth at two p.m. Eastern time. You okay. do you guys have any questions for us before we go? Yes, Sarita at comprehensivebrands.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, we've been together from my Yahoo days. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I never met you. Yeah, and I never met you. <laughs> but surely. Um, once this thing gets underway, that is reason enough for us to be face to face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all me too, me too. Okay all then. Right. All right. Have a great day, you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Do you want me to send them this email? The operating cost schedule and the development cost schedule. Yes. Okay. Um, even though it sounded like she had it, but still, just you know, just yeah, because I'm not sure if James has it. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. She says she's gonna send James this email. Yes, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. What did you guys think about that? Looks like she's gonna pull together some leverage for us, so that would be good. Yes. It seems she like the most leverage out of anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it seems like she's more on board and less like eh about the leverage piece mm -hmm. than anybody else we've talked to so yeah. far. So that's like a good it's thing. Daunting, but it's not like like she's not yeah. like yeah. yeah, she's not like oh. <laughs> oh. I was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, first off, we were all like, mm -hmm. really? Ten dollars? <laughs> Why would I ask for the one? But. Yeah. Okay. She's like, oh, okay. <coughs> Instead of like, oh. it helps that they have their own land that's set free. Mm -hmm. So Haley's got this. I want to know how that much land. Like, how I'm so confused. Like how big is it? Two hundred and thirty-five thousand. Oh, a house. No, I'm saying like that's the cost of a house mm -hmm. here. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm very confused. It depends no. on the area. It's, uh, yeah, it's yes. undeveloped land, and it's the area. It's yeah. probably a lot of acres too. I should have asked her how many acres, but we can <clears throat> talk about that. Later. No, I mean, I can grab, she said the, the address. We can ask her for the address and look it up, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. we'll ask. Mm -hmm. So, she's saying, um, well, I mentioned utilities. The city may do it. Because that would bring the city, the city should want to develop their area, so they should give that utility. The land value, she'll possibly get the 4% income housing tax credit, and then... She kind of pretty confident about that one, too. The 4%, yeah. 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 Of any, you know, the others, they didn't even mention it. Mm -hmm. So the 4%, she said, is non-competitive, so that's good. All right. Okay. Makes me hopeful. All right. Let's get into our status meeting.